Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is Force with some more Elder Scrolls Online. Today I will be showing you my very first dungeon run in ESO. This is called the Banished Cells. Now I've shown you dungeons and caverns and stuff before, but this is the first legitimate group dungeon that is instanced. This is the, the legitimate group content in this game uh, while you're leveling up. So these are the Banished Cells and what I'll be showing you here is more or less a full run. I'm cutting out the down time and a handful of the trash mobs I will be showing you some trash mobs like here's the first group that we ended up pulling they pulled the group while I was talking to the NPC I was trying to get the lore and the story behind this dungeon but they were like no go 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 surprisingly enough though because for everyone here uh, all of us this was our very first run this is a complete pug I don't know these guys we're running a terrible setup it's three DPS and one healer there is no tank here in this group but we did a pretty good job with CC using stuns roots and snares and uh, since our healer was able to top us off it ended up being okay now this is something that I'm okay with in low-level dungeons but I do certainly hope that in the high level dungeons you require a proper makeup and we're going to assume that will be one tank two DPS and one healer. So I'm hoping, because it's groups of four here in ESO, I'm hoping that you need that uh, because I, I sort of prefer MMOs that, that have that dungeon structure. But you know, who knows, maybe, uh, maybe it's working out differently. At least here in this low level dungeon, we just could roll with three DPS uh, and a healer. But I could definitely see, there's no question, if you had someone who had heavy mitigation and was able to maintain aggro on even just a handful of mobs, it wouldn't even need to be anything, but even someone who could maintain aggro on a few mobs, that would help pretty significantly. So I could definitely see tank healer, two DPS, probably being the ideal setup. So yes, what you'll notice is uh, we'll be doing a lot of CC. I really tried to focus on that. I'm really group minded when I play, be it PVP or PVE. Um, a lot of times I end up running as tank or healer. I decided to play DPS because uh, obviously that's a lot of fun too. And um, so even with that, even though I'm running DPS, I'm gonna end up using a lot of my stamina on my AOE snare, which is my three. It's not AOE, it's a frontal cone. So I basically shoot out a barrage of arrows and a cone in front of me and it snares. Uh, it's actually, I've got it uh, I've got it morphed to root. So it, it originally snares the enemy and I've got it morphed to root them in place for a couple of seconds, which because it'll help my group stay out of their melee range uh, definitely helps a lot against melee opponents. So here's our first a boss. It's the, what is that, the Cell Harvester? Is that what that says? Uh, <laughs> I don't even know the name of any of these things. Um, he was pretty easy. He had a couple of minions at the start of the fight, but beyond that, it looks like he just threw down some frost. wasn't that bad. One of our allies does end up going down. In fact, I almost went down. You, you'll ha I don't know if you noticed back there, but I was able to quickly uh, jump into stealth. I basically have a vanish mechanic here uh, as my class and as my spec. And uh, that, that saved me there, because I would have probably died without that. Our healer was sort of, you know, mixing between healing and DPS. Uh, so after that first boss, there was another pack or two of trash mobs, similar to the ones you saw at the start of the video. And then we went into this uh, interesting ritual room. We've got some floating stones there in the back. So we first go into this room. There's a couple of mobs just hanging out above this little glyphed rune area right there in the dead center. And then once we clear these guys, we activate uh, some buttons on the side panels in this room. And that summons a second wave. And then we end up getting a boss after that. So we'll just take a look at pulling these guys here. So you'll notice I'll do my snare right there, roots those two guys in place. It just helps so much. You know, if when, when you first start out, and if you're not able to get full dungeons, I mean, I'm playing right now, and there's just not a lot of people on. And because of that, in this particular run, we couldn't find a tank. So again, we were just running as this 3 DPS healer mix. Now, if that ends up happening to you, and you're not super familiar with uh, how MMOs work, just focus on that CC. Any abilities that you have that will root enemies, uh, basically lock them in place, stop them from moving, snare them, which is to slow them down, or stun them. Anything like that is what you'll want to focus on, especially in large groups like this. Now look at me, I'm just spamming it. I'm spamming it to, to get these guys rooted as much as possible. And then a little quick escape here. Oh, it's so clutch. <laughs> a little quick escape right before I die, and then the healer does his nice little AoE heal. So once we took care of that second summoning, we have the final one, which is uh, this little boss guy. He's going to come forward. He's not a little boss. He's a legitimate boss. This is Shadowrend, 
and he likes to charge people. It's like the, the Triceratops of... <laughs> the, the Triceratops Raptor. It's like a, a hybrid combo of the two of the Elder Scrolls series. Uh, so I'll be vanishing to drop aggro, and then whenever there's a, uh, a an add-on, an ad, an ad, they're called ads, an extra mob, an extra minion that a boss summons, uh, I, I try to focus that down, and that's exactly what you saw me do there. He summons like a, a shadow spectrum of himself. He died very easily. Because of that, my assumption is that he does a ton of damage. If, if you have an ad that dies quickly, it probably means if he hits you, you're in a lot of trouble. So luckily we're able to zerg him down that first time, and then he's gonna have a second summon here. So you can see him just bouncing aggro in between all these guys, and there's that second summon. I run over, snare him in place, and then DPS him down before he hurts any- well, actually, he did hurt my friend. <laughs> my friend ended up dying. I was about to say before he hurts my friend, but uh, you'll see me spamming this a lot of times when mobs get low. Uh, that sort of works as an execute for me. It's essentially the ability that it does. It uses up some of my ma magicka and does a little bit of damage uh, just as a base attack. However, when an enemy is at low health, uh, I don't have a numerical value. I'm guessing it's somewhere between 10 and 20%. When an enemy is at a low health, it does something like 250 or 300% more damage. It's a significant boost in damage. So a lot of times when... We've got especially big enemies that are, are very low. I'll be spamming that. Uh, it's like this dagger attack that's also ranged. I have it morphed uh, to be a ranged attack as well. So a little bit of snare here. Here we go with our next boss, uh, snaring these adds. And this is the boss. Oh, let's get ready for a facepalm moment, guys. You're gonna see it in just one second. So I'm feeling good, you know, I'll take a little bit of damage, no big deal. I don't want to pop my last health potion. This guy casts something, I'm like, I'm fine, I'm fine. And then all of a sudden, Fireball <laughs> just comes out of nowhere, right in my face. And I'm like, oh, that's embarrassing. But luckily, you can res in combat. It is a, a channel, so it's not something that you can do super quickly. You have to have someone that's standing there, channeling, and they have to actually get it off. Uh, luckily, my ally was able to do so. And then once I'm back up, we're in quite a precarious situation. I am low on health, low on mana, low on stamina. So I just try to do some uh, pillar humping over here. <laughs> the idea of trying to break line of sight so that you can't uh, be an easy target uh, for any of your opponents. And then we finally finish him off, and then I'm like, yeah, I'll return the favor. Let's go here and res this guy. It does consume a soul gem, so it's not something that people, you know, you have to have a lot of soul gems if you're going to be spamming it. Uh, but luckily, we only had a few deaths in this entire run. Another pack of trash here as we make our way uh, towards the end of the dungeon. Uh, this was cool. So we had some archers doing their little frontal cone damage. Again, just going with some kiting. Again, these early level dungeons, you know, I expect them to be simplistic. Uh, it was a good time, though. This was uh, quite fun, and the, the, it was really something that I also really enjoyed. It was very engaging. It's so funny doing something like this, and you always have to be on your toes when you're doing something like 3 DPS and a healer. You can't just sort of face roll it. Okay, I believe this is our second to last boss. He had a couple of mobs in front of him. Uh, a few of the bosses that had mobs in front of them, we were able to pull them and kill them before the boss aggroed. This one, it wasn't the case. You'll notice I, I just went right in there and then the boss immediately aggroes. So just snaring up those guys. Uh, he places this rune on the ground that just explodes in AoE damage, so you'll see it. It's a big red spot on the ground, and when that happens, he does a slam, and then it goes boom, boom, boom. You're gonna notice a successive burst there. You just stay away from that. That's the best idea. Just don't stand in it. It looks like you can stand on the brim of it and be fine, but don't stand in it. That's, that's bad. Uh, snares don't appear to work on the bosses, but they have worked on every add in, uh, in this early level dungeon, but the bosses themselves don't appear to be affected, or at least by roots. Maybe they are affected by snares, but they are not affected by root, uh, rooting them in place. So I'll be going, uh, also going for my stealth there, even when I'm not in danger, because when I leave stealth, uh, my morphed version of that ability uh, gives me, I think, 70% increased chance to crit. So sometimes I'll do that just to get a, a big hit on an opponent. And check this out, I got this off this boss, nice. Reduce stamina cost of abilities, plus increase to max health. Pretty darn awesome. Uh, big trash pack before our final boss encounter here. The final boss encounter was pretty neat. I'm excited to show this to you. So we've got just a pillar of guys. Again, 
general makeup, a bunch of average weakling guys, and then that one guy who's tough. And usually he's the tallest. <laughs> the tallest guy in the group is usually the toughest. That that's, uh, appears to be how it works. So we're going to just root him and play stop him from getting my healer back there. And pop shot a few of these other fools. So I I'm going to be interested to see. So right now... I am just rolling as an archer. Now, at level 15, you unlock the ability for weapon swapping. It's uh, basically something you hit the tilde key, and with that, you're able to swap between a weapon set and an additional hotbar. So, it's going to be a, a new weapon layout, as well as five new abilities and a new ultimate. Now, I currently have my second setup as for dual wielding, but the reason I'm not using it at all right now is because I'm still low level. I haven't really upgraded my dual wielding because up until this point I've been spending all of my points focusing on archery right I've been spending all my points uh, on the bow skill line the ranged bow skill line and then other skill lines that sort of work well with the play style that I've been playing so far the way this game works though is not only you level up but through getting soul shards in the world you get more skill points and it is said that you can eventually unlock all of the skill trees with the exception of the race and the class so you've got three class and one race skill lines so the other classes and the other races you won't have access to but all of the general skill lines that will be all the weapons in the game all, I almost aggroed the boss because I didn't know he was coming all of the weapons in the game all of the armor uh, the things like the the uh, the Mage Guild, the Warriors Guild, you know, uh, there's PvP skill lines, all that stuff you're going to be able to unlock. So that's something that as I progress, you know, right now I'm focusing on bow, but once I've maxed that out, I'm going to focus on the dual wielding and then I will be freely hot swapping. So the point of all that was that I'm not hot swapping, I'm not weapon swapping right now because my secondary set, it's suboptimal. Alright, so this first happened, I wasn't really sure what was going on, I saw that big eyeball floating towards the boss. And uh, I'm like, okay, let me shoot that. Uh, but I wasn't really sure. I think the second eyeball ends up getting to him. And I, I'm, I, it probably just buffs him up or heals him. I'm not absolutely positive. Uh, maybe we'll be able to see here. So here's the second eyeball. Oh, no. We, do we stop the second eyeball? No, it gets to him. So that I think that looked like that healed him up. So at that point, I realized, okay, the eyeball is booking it for the boss. My new duty is to destroy that eyeball. And, you know, years of raiding in World of Warcraft taught me anything. If there are mobs running towards the boss, you probably kill them, because they probably help him in some sense. So, at this point, I distance myself from the boss. I put myself in between the boss and the summoning location of those floating eyeballs. And I made it my duty to make sure that I took those out whenever they popped up. And it's just its just a good move. That's just, you know, general rating sense. Um, I did a recently a video talking about first-person perspective. I cannot imagine effectively playing a dungeon in first person. You've seen just things can get a little hectic and crazy here. There'll be mobs behind you all the time. Uh, it's just, I don't know. It's personal opinion though and preference. I'm sure there are people out there who can do it and probably can do it very effectively, but it still seems suboptimal to me. But I'm not here to go on that rant. I was just here to show you my first dungeon. So that is it guys, my very first dungeon run in ESO. It's pretty typical in the sense that, you know, you've got trash mobs, you've got bosses. Uh, it was still a lot of fun. I really do enjoy the combat. I've heard complaints, uh, you know, there's so many complaints about this game. This is such a, a highly debated title, but <laughs> I've played it for like 30 hours this week. I've just been thoroughly enjoying my time with it. Uh, the gameplay is a lot of fun. The world's very immersive. If you take your time and actually dive into it, and actually listen to the dialogue and read those books and do all that stuff. Um, I personally have been really enjoying that, uh, playing in that manner. And this dungeon was also pretty good. It's a low level dungeon, wasn't terribly challenging. We had a couple of deaths here and there. We were also running three DPS and a heals. I'll let you guys know when and if an NDA lifts for the end game stuff, because right now we're just focusing still on early game. Even though the NDA has officially been lifted, we're still just focusing on early game. That's what we're allowed to show. So end game stuff, uh, we'll see uh, how that pans out. I'll let you guys know. But that is it, guys. Thank you so much for watching my very first dungeon run in ESO. The Banished Cells complete. I enjoyed it. Hopefully you guys liked the video. Stay tuned for more ESO coverage and other great gaming content here on the channel. Keep watching and keep owning. I got a sweet... Well, it wasn't sweet for me because it was... Freaking, it's just a helm that I don't want. That's heavy armor. That stinks.